Yo, what's up guys, Eric Wong here. And I'm back with part two of my Nutrition It's You video series, where we're gonna talk about the second level of the pyramid over here. And that is you as an eater. So this is one of the more interesting kind of concepts that you don't hear talked about a lot when it comes to nutrition. And it's unfortunate because this is where you get the power to stick with whatever plan that you're on. This is where you get the concepts and the ideas and the strategies to come up with something that is going to work for you as an individual. So it's all about you. There's a lot of different diet plans, a lot of different ways of eating, but what's most important is you and your relationship with whatever food that you're eating. So when you talk, think about it in terms of a relationship, this is going to be a relationship that you're going to be in for the rest of your life, whether you like it or not. So do you want to have a good relationship or do you want to have, or are you going to just accept a shitty relationship with food? And just like any other relationship, whether it's your wife, your girlfriend, your best friend, your husband, whatever it is, you've got to put time, you got to put energy into it. Uh, there's a lot of different concepts. If you just think of it in terms of relationship, that will help a lot right there. But let's start off with the biggest number one question, and that is why do you want to change your diet? Why do you want to eat in a certain way? And initially, a lot of the answers that you'll get that'll come right off the top of your head are things like, oh, I want to get lean. I want to get a six pack. I want to lose 20, 30, 40 pounds of fat. You know, I want to get my beach body. I want more energy so that I can train harder in the gym. And those are all good things. And those are all things that we call extrinsic goals. So they're things outside. There's some kind of outside in outcome that we're looking to achieve. Those are all good things. I'm not saying those are bad. You gotta have those things. Those can set up markers, you know, the old smart goals thing. You can set up a marker, a measurable objective to reach by a certain date, and that's good. But there's one thing that's missing for most people, <clears throat> and that is the intrinsic beliefs, the intrinsic reasons why you want to do this. Now, I stumbled upon this kind of back in the day, and it's been the most powerful thing for me. And it's all about changing your frame of reference and linking whatever goal that you want to achieve, and let's just say it's eat better, eat healthy, for whatever goal that you have in mind. Linking that to one of your core beliefs, one of the things that you know, you believe about yourself that you're not going to compromise no matter what. And let me give you an example of that. When I first started working as a personal trainer and doing all this stuff, one of my core beliefs has been for the longest time, you know, you got to walk the talk. So when I'm thinking, okay, I'm trying to teach people about nutrition, trying to help people lose weight and eat better. I've got to be doing that myself. Otherwise it's bullshit coming from me. That's the way I feel. At least some people can do it. Maybe I don't know, but that's not me. So I've got to believe what I'm talking about. Otherwise, I'm not going to have any confidence. I'm not going to be able to deliver it in a way that people are going to believe me and then actually go and do it. So I better get down to do, figuring this stuff out and then applying it to my life. And once I tied that to, you know, got to walk the talk. I'm a, a trainer helping people live healthier, eat better, teaching people about nutrition. That made it really easy for me to stick to the nutrition plan, the initial nutrition plan that I set out for myself. So think about your core beliefs. What are your core beliefs or your core roles in your life? You know, that was tied to my core belief, got to walk the talk. I was tied to one of the core roles of, in my life of being a trainer, being an expert on healthy nutrition, healthy eating, performance, body composition, all that stuff. So what are some of the roles and beliefs that you can tie eating and nutrition itsu to so that you can, whenever you're faced with a decision, it's super easy. You're just like, you know what? I better eat this because I got to walk the talk. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to look myself in the mirror. Or I believe one of my ultimate roles is as a father and I believe you got to lead by example. So if I'm not leading by example, then there's no way that I'm going to be able to instill the things that I know and believe are important into my child. Okay, so whatever it is for you, think about those things and then boom, you've got your why. 
Now it's all about asking a few more questions to come up with the proper strategy and the plan to make sure that you're eating what you want to be eating. The nutrition it's you way. Okay, so here's a big one. What are your hot button foods or your trigger foods? You can name them whatever you want, but what are those foods that once you start eating them, you can't stop? You eat way more than you want and they just set something off in your brain where you just you eat and eat and eat until it's all done and then it's like, oh shit, what happened? You know, you, you come up for air and you're like, oh my God, I just ate a whole bag of chips. That's it for me. Plain, un, plain chips. Plain, especially the crunchy stuff like Miss Vicky's or the kettle chips. Just plain, no flavoring, a little bit of sea salt. Man, I can crush a whole bag of those without even taking a breath. So I know that. And that's why I don't keep that stuff around the house. That's why I try to avoid going into the grocery store and walking down that aisle. Because it, it's just going to, I'm going to reach out, grab it, throw it in there, start the bag before I even leave the grocery store. And then uh, it's all downhill from there. So list your hot button foods. And most people only have a few. There's not like 30 hot button foods or trigger foods that people go crazy on. Just usually one to three. So list those and then just think about ideas of how to avoid eating those all the time. How to avoid eating them when you don't want to eat them. Okay. Next up, similar, <clears throat> hot button or trigger events, okay? So this could be going out with buddies, watching a hockey game or a basketball game or a UFC. Again, I'm talking from personal experience. UFC with my buddies at somebody's house is where I'm going to eat the most junk food. I know that for sure. I'm just not going to stop. I'm going to be drinking a few beers. Chips are going to be around. Whatever, cookies. I'll eat it all. It doesn't matter what it is really at that point because that hot button event, the UFC, just gets me into that mode of eating junk. So what do I do? I make sure I don't do that all the time. I don't go to UFCs and watch at my buddy's place where there's going to be tons of junk food around every weekend. I do that maybe once every month or two. You know, it's an event and I go and I know, okay, I'm just going to eat and drink whatever I want. <laughs> and it's all good because it only happens you know, once every one or two months, okay? So you gotta know what those are for you. Could be a meeting at the office. If that's you, then bring something that you're gonna eat or eat something healthy right before, eat an apple, drink, chug a 500 milliliter bottle of water, fill yourself up so you don't wanna eat that junk or whatever other strategy, be creative. Think about this beforehand. That's the key. It's the, the conscious thinking before you get into those events so you have these strategies in place so that you don't succumb to your norm, which is typically eating more junk food or eating junk food that you don't want to be eating. Okay, so hot button or trigger foods and events. Think about those things and think about strategies to deal with them. Okay, and that's all considering you, your personal situation, whatever it is. This is where you've got to figure out and you've got to do a little bit of thinking about making this plan, making your goals a reality, all right? So there's a couple more things that I want to talk about uh, with respect to you as an eater. And one is your mindset when you're coming in. So when you're eating food, what are you thinking? Are you just thinking, oh, you know, you're thinking about something else completely, or you're thinking about this food in front of you, okay? So if you're thinking about something else, you're not putting any energy and time into it. And if you go back to that relationship analogy, imagine that you're hanging out with your wife and you're always on your phone, texting, surfing the web, whatever it is. We've all been there. Let's be honest. Uh, it doesn't go over well. You might get away with it for a couple minutes, but if you do that all the time, she's going to be up in your face and that relationship is going downhill because you're not putting any conscious attention into it. So. Same thing goes if you're just eating and watching TV or reading a book. That's my biggest thing is reading. I've got to just put that away and just focus on this food and be present with this food and nurture that relationship. It's something we do a few times a day, you know, three, four, five times a day. And maybe you spend 10, 20 minutes on it, 30 minutes on it. A little bit of time. But nurturing this relationship and having a strong, healthy relationship with nutrition, with your food, is 
one of the biggest things that you can do to benefit your life. So many areas of your life, your performance, your health, your body composition, and a lot more as well. Okay, so your mindset. Are you present? Are you conscious? Okay, now let's say we're eating. Are you grateful? And the simple contrast you can make, a lot of people don't have any food at all to eat. So whatever it is that is in front of you, if you're choosing to eat it, you know, you don't have to eat. You can go hungry. Being hungry is okay. You know, we've all this talk about fasting. We're realizing that we don't need to be eating all the time. Like a little bit of hunger is not going to kill me. It's actually good for me. So whatever food it is in front of you, if you're going to choose to eat it, remember, you don't have to eat anything. If you're going to choose to eat it, be grateful. Whether it's a free range organic chicken breast or a bag of package of Smarties or M&Ms, you know, be grateful because a lot of people don't have anything. Okay. So that's another little mindset thing. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about, and it's mindset, it's related, is rushing. Are you always eating on the go? Are you always wolfing your food down? If you are, stop. Stop and take a deep breath. Before you start eating, take a few deep breaths, you know, count four seconds in, four seconds out. Do that for a minute, and then get into eating your food. It's only one minute. But the thing is, when you do that, you activate your parasympathetic nervous system. And if you've heard the fight or flight response, when something scary is in your environment, your sympathetic nervous system ramps up and becomes dominant, and then you get that fight or flight response. So you can run, you can fight, you can disappear, you can battle with the tiger or whatever it is, it's attacking you. And the other things that go along with it is you don't digest well. Blood goes to your muscles, and your heart as opposed to your digestive organs because it, when, if you're ready to fight or f run you don't need to be digesting. Your body doesn't need to think about that stuff. However, in the other nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system, that's the rest and recover mode basically for your body. When you're in that state, blood is going to your digestive system, you're going to break down that food, you're going to be able to use that to rebuild your muscles, your tendons, your injuries, your energy, and you're going to take that food and get more out of it. So breathing will help to slow you down. You can think about when you're breathing, being grateful, you know, the whole saying grace before meals, that's a great practice. Uh, you can do that. You don't have to do it out loud. You can do it in your head and that's awesome. It would be even better if you got a family doing it together with your family, even if you're not religious, just say, uh, have a moment of gratitude for the food that you're about to eat. Okay. But don't rush. Take your time, slow down, enjoy it, taste the food, breathe, and that's going to help you digest. The other thing that that's going to help you with is to slow down and eat less. Because that old, you've probably heard about the signal, takes time for your stomach to tell your brain that you're full. If you just wolf down your food, that signal doesn't happen. And you could have eaten a lot more than you actually needed. But if you slow down, you taste the food, Put your fork down in between bites, take a deep breath. I'm kind of rushing right now. I shouldn't, this is important stuff. No need to rush. Take a deep breath, slow down, enjoy your food. And then when your body, your stomach is full, it's gonna tell your brain, hey, you know, I'm good to go. No need to eat anymore. And you can put it down, put your fork down, put the food away, enjoy it for later, okay? So that is the mindset stuff right there. Big thing. You as an eater, why are you doing this? Why do you want to achieve whatever goal it is that you want to achieve? Tie it to your core beliefs, tie it to important roles in your life, and you're going to have success. Know your hot button foods or your trigger foods and events and plan strategies around, around them so that you don't succumb to those things. If they're just in your environment all the time, you've got to change your environment. Okay. It's very important. If it's certain people in your life, you might have to stop hanging out with certain people so much. Okay? It's not easy to do, but if you want to make change, change is not easy. Getting a six pack is not easy. It takes time and it takes effort. And finally, what's your mindset around food? Are you grateful or are you always, oh, you know, this food sucks. I hate this food. You know, it doesn't taste good or it's cheap or whatever it is. 
Are you present and conscious? And are you taking your time? Okay, nurture that relationship. All right, guys, so this is part two, you as a needer. This is something that isn't talked about a lot with respect to nutrition, but it's very important. It's just as important as what foods you're putting in your mouth. All right, guys, so in the next video, we're gonna talk about kind of the sexier stuff, the stuff that everybody talks about, macronutrients, you know, protein, carbs, and fats. Not only those things, but also when to eat those things. So timing, carb cycling, fasting. We're going to discuss all that good stuff. All right, guys. So thanks again for checking out this video. Make sure that you hit that like button down on the way down. If you've got any questions, hit me up and I'll address them either in the comments. I'll just reply to you or I'll talk about it in the next video. All right, guys. Thanks for checking me out. Peace.